Okay, this video is about what is a human. And that sounds like a straightforward question, but actually it's not. Um, from an evolu evolutionary biology classification or a Darwinism classification, a human is simply a primate that talks. Okay, but there's really a lot more to that, and this is a very important thing because it determines, um, you know, a person's rights in society. Basically, if a human is created in the image of God, and this is, of course, the famous painting by Michelangelo of God creating Adam. This is the creation painting on the Sistine Chapel ceiling. If man is created in the image of God, then man himself should be a creator, like God, who he's, whose image he's created in. And he can be expected to be part of you know, a rational universe where one can understand things, one can create like God. And um, that means he's entitled to natural rights, uh, basically because he's partly divine, perhaps part beast, but also part divine. Therefore, one should be thoughtful and kind to him and should not be cruel to him. On the other hand, if he's just a talking primate like a monkey, he's got no intrinsic rights. Um, Voltaire had said, I want my doctor to believe in God so he does not rob me. Well, one can also say, I want my doctor or other people I interact with to believe that humans are creating an image of God. Otherwise, you end up like with Dostoevsky's quote, Fyodor Dostoevsky. If there is no God, then everything is permitted, even cannibalism. And that's from his book, Brothers Karamazov, you know, published in the late 1800s. Um, there's good reason to believe in God. By the way, I believe in God. There's nothing ambiguous about it. And the reason I do it is because that's scientifically based on what I know, and I study these subjects a lot. There's good reason to. Um, for example, human DNA, there's 3.3 billion base pairs. You know, where does that information come from? You know, as John Lennox had said, if you saw your name written in letters on the sand at the beach, you would know that a literate person had written that, however many letters your name is. So how could, uh, you know, essentially the book of human uh, genetic information, 3.3 billion letters, be written without a very, very, very smart person or smart something having written it? Okay, it's incredible. 3.3 uh, billion base pairs all precisely made to create a human. Another thing people say, well, Darwin is the si Darwinism is the science that explains everything. Actually, it's not. I was an A student at Stanford University in evolutionary biology. I've read about 50 books on evolutionary biology and related topics, you know, since then. Uh, so I've kept up with the issues reasonably well. And I can assure you, Darwinism has nothing to do with the origin of life. That's a totally separate question. Even Crick, you know, of the Watson and Crick discoverers of DNA structure said, you know, it's like a miracle that um, life, if life, occurred on Earth, and it, it almost seems he came up with a panspermia theory that maybe it was seeded from somewhere else, but that puts you into a retrogression, well, how did life occur somewhere else? Um, there's, of course, the Aristotle's unmoved mover argument. Then there's the data from the expanding universe through both the patterns of electromagnetic waves and Doppler shift that indicate the Big Bang theory, the origin of the universe occurred about 14 billion years ago, uh, life on Earth about 4 billion years ago. And if it was created, let's say, by a god, he couldn't have been just a god, you know, deistic in a sense that made the world because the world was too hot at that time. He had to come back later on when things had cooled off a little bit and create life subsequently. So he had to at least care enough to come back and create life. And if you look at the patterns in the uh, fossil, the record of the rock, the way they are, you know, it looked like he had to come back at least several times. For example, the Cambrian expansion, you can't explain that from Darwin. There's no transitional forms to explain that. Um, there's also incredibly powerful arguments about fine-tuning in astronomy, fine-tuning in biology and biochemistry, in human biochemistry. It's far more incredible than any little Mickey Mouse College textbook could indicate. Um, the human eye, the human brain, you know, 100 billion neurons with 10 times as many supporting cells, glial cells, primarily astrocytes. Now, how could all these cells come together and interact properly without some incredible design behind their, their uh, design and function? The immune system, the flagella, et cetera. You know, and if you only wanted to look at one book, if you're interested in the subject, I would suggest this one. It's called, Is Atheism Dead? Um, the author is Eric Metaxas. It's, it's the most concise and best. I've read a whole bunch of these things. And this, this one's real good. You can just watch the guy. He's got videos online, Eric Metaxas. If you want to see this guy, uh, Stephen Meyer, he's a uh, you know, return of the God hypothesis, Douglas Axe. There's a whole bunch of these guys. They're good. They're smart. Metaxas will, will quickly get you to what you probably want to hear. 
Um, then the question is, well, why is atheism pushed so hard at the universities and on the internet? And I think it's because atheism takes away all of a person's right. if a per rights. If a person is just a talking monkey, they have zero rights. Monkeys are in cages at the zoo. So, you know, any type of ruler, they're going to want atheism. Look at Stalin, look at Mao, because that way the person has no rights. Okay, it's pretty obvious. So here, for example, is a talking primate. Do you think this guy has any right? Do you think this guy has any say? Do you think this guy has any appeal? No, he goes where he's put, and when his owner's done with him, he does whatever he wants with him. So the point is, even if you are an atheist, you are a thousand times better off if your society believes that humans are created in the image of God. What a person selects for their own religion, their own sense of morality, that's an individual decision. However, we all are affected by what, by what society chooses to use for the definition of a human. And, you know, you people say, oh, well, science doesn't need religion or God or love or humanity or all this stuff. And I would completely disagree, and I have a lot of experience with medicine and science. For example, look at the craziness of Ivy League psychiatrists recommending all these psychiatric medications for children, even though the long-term papers, numerous long-term uh, work has shown that, that those children do worse when they're medicated. And there's tons of data, like other psychiatric data, showing the long-term outcomes with antidepressants, with um, antipsychotics. They're all much worse. Um, so these are reasons why if these uh, Ivy League psychiatrists valued more the individual, they wouldn't exploit them in this way. And so, anyways, I think it does matter. It's good to be aware of this. So when you discuss this issue, you're aware of this. Hope this is helpful.